Joseph knew from the start that was not his biological son. And that goes against mm-hmm. most primal male instinct, at least, you know, mm-hmm. like he wasn't going to have the same drive to protect that child that, that Mary would. But he, from all accounts we know, was, you know, a, a, as good of a father to him as anybody could have been. We are Saints in the South, your source for gospel growth and good times. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Saints in the South, episode 150. Come follow me, come follow me, 150. 150, what? That's right. 150. 150, 150 starting a new year. New Testament, new material. New, testa- new Testament in a new year. That's right. That's right. So, so this is our, as a church, it's our beginning of the second go round of the come follow me curriculum, as far as having it laid out. Right. right. Uh, so yep. we, we start, when we started, come follow me, we started with, with the new Testament. Right. 2019, so, uh, I believe. 19, yep. 20, 20, 20, yep. 2019. And gotcha. went through a whole cycle and now we're starting. Over cycle now, and now we're starting with, again. We, we, this, we missed out on the, on the right. first, on the first year. As far as Saints uh, so, in the South goes. As far as Saints in the South. That's yeah. Right. This will complete our four. For us, uh, years. Years. That's for right. Year. Never ending four year cycle. That's right. So, uh, hey, how, how was y'all's Christmas, man? Everything, everything go good? Santa Claus is good, good to us. Okay. Very well, good. It was a, peaceful, a peaceful Christmas. Um, so we, uh, my wife and I had a, had a light, nice peaceful Christmas at home together. Uh, our last of the children, uh, finally empty nesters gone from the nest, empty nesters. Yep. So That's Jacob right. and, uh, so many of y'all who have, who listened to the podcast, uh, might have seen a couple episodes with Jake. Was it two or three that actually Jacob? Uh, yeah. He had on. a couple on there and, and then he had, we actually had a specific interview. That interview we did with yeah. Him. So, yeah. So Jacob completed his mission and, uh, he is now in Utah. He's in Provo, Utah, getting ready to start at uh, BYU. So it's big changes. Yep. And then right. uh, Megan out went out there with him, my wife, and she, she got him set up and everything. And she flew back her, her flight. I don't think I've told y'all this yet, but her flight, the, the, the weather and snow was so bad. Her flight was canceled and she actually oh, wow. had to book another flight that luckily she was able to get one the same day, but a few hours later. So she actually landed in Jacksonville right at midnight, Christmas Eve or Christmas. Wow. Morning. Oh wow! Yeah, so, yeah, I went down to Jacksonville, which like a was, Hallmark movie. Oh, don't know. It's about an hour and a half drive from from my house to to Jacksonville Airport, and uh, so we uh, yeah, we got home late, and we ended up getting to sleep probably three or four o'clock in the morning, and uh, so we got up, and I asked Megan what she wanted to do for Christmas. She said she wanted to get up and go to church and come back home and go back to bed. So that's exactly there you go. Good. <laughs> Sounds good. Three in the three o'clock in the morning, man. Y'all might have seen Santa coming down the chimney. Yeah, or what the heck? That time. I think we just missed him. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, that's exciting for Jacob. Uh, new mm-hmm. new chapter in his life. That's awesome. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, Marcus got uh, some big things happening. Marcus too, right? got some big stuff going on. I'm working on empty nesting, I guess. Uh, I got you know, so I've got uh, yeah. So my daughter, she just received her mission call. She's going to Provo, Utah, is where she's going. She'll start her mission on. Let me think. Now I'm not great with. Uh, I think it's February. Was it February? February or yeah, it's February the the sixth is when she starts the home MTC. So it's the next week. It's like February the something. I can't remember. I have to look it up. But anyway, but anyway, she's leaving in February. Um, February and something. February something. And uh, and then my son, he uh, he will be attending BYU Idaho next year. So he'll be going there. Okay. So I guess uh, all my kids will be out west, and uh, oh, except for Maggie, we'll still have our little Maggie with us. She'll be sixteen this coming up year. So yeah. I guess so, we're just getting old, man. It's like not I don't so know little anymore, happening. huh? She's gonna be hmm. driving a car, and, driving a car. Man. She'll be gone. Who knows where she'll be? So I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. What's uh, what's up with all these saints not wanting to stay in the south, man? How they get going know. out west? What's up? I mean, we it's here's the this is the this is the thing at the end. This is the twist of this whole this whole thing is that we're the only three saints in the south. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Everybody gets a call out west and we're still Yeah, I mean, we're what the world, world, man. All of a sudden then Kenny he gets called as as a 70, general authority 70. He's <laughs> so. Well, very good. Well, I don't we uh all my, all my kids are still at the house. So, uh we 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 hadn't we hadn't got a little time. stage yet. Which your oldest? How old is your oldest? How old is he? 
He, L- Lily is Lily. I mean, 17. well, Lily's seventeen. Lily's and then seventeen. You got, but, Brody's sixteen. Yeah, I was going to say one of them's driving your. Yeah, you gave. Driving. Did you give him your old truck? No. So uh, officially, that's my truck, okay. and I right, and I've is made he it clear. It? He is driving that truck. Okay, so that's his truck. truck. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> I, I I let him call it his truck and stuff, but he 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 knows who bought that oh, yeah. truck and and all that stuff. Yeah, so. that thing repainted and everything. Anyway, had, had it repainted, got got Looks it set good. up for him. So anyway, yeah, appreciate all right. it. All right, well, hey, let's uh, let's jump into some come follow me discussions here. So all right, um, I figured we would talk a little bit about uh, about Matthew and about Luke, kind of right. kind of who, who they are. Uh, but I'll go ahead and put a little plug in again. I've done this a couple of times on my own here, but uh, the series, The Chosen. Mm-hmm. If you haven't watched The Chosen, check it out. It is is absolutely awesome. Uh, but it it gives goes it takes the facts from the Bible, and then it fills in the blanks. You know, yeah. and uh, I think it does a, a really good job of it. Specifically with Matthew, uh, Matthew was mm-hmm. a was, was a tax collector. He was a publican, right? Yeah, and uh, so he was not popular. He was not. He was, he was, he was, he was not he, well. Well, he, he worked. He was hated. IRS. That's yeah. right. That's right. Exactly. Uh, by you know, by his own people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so he was basically considered a traitor. Uh, you know, if you if if you think about it, and so knowing that he ended up being being called, you know, as a as an apostle yeah. to the Savior, and. And, and and the chosen the series does a really good job of taking you know Matthew and Peter and all these others and why and having them interact because imagine these these two people that that are you know the same faith right but po- polar opposites of each other oh, yeah. one with yeah. the traitor they don't yeah. get along they, they it, don't get it's along. hard to imagine for us I feel like what it would have actually been like if if you watch the chosen you have seen some of that because for us I mean like Marcus said like the IRS but really it's different because yeah he was collecting taxes for Rome. And right. the Jews yeah. hated Rome. They right. they didn't feel like they, they were occupied by right. Rome. Right. And here was this guy, one of them who was selling them out and you know, yeah. sucking out all their money to send it to Rome. Yeah, they he was not very popular. Yeah. So it, it's just it was just a it's just a reminder that you can bring all these different backgrounds and you can we we can come we can come together for a for a uh for a singular cause, right? Mm-hmm. And that's ultimately right. what we're what we're what we're striving to do. So, and uh, and so he geared his writings towards the Jews, um, mm-hmm. and it was based off a lot of what the Old Testament prophecies, their prophecies, uh, prophecies about the the Messiah and everything and being fulfilled. Luke Luke was a was a Gentile who uh who, who had been uh, converted and who had who he ended up serving with paul uh, a good bit mm-hmm. and so his writings are focused uh towards the the, the gentiles yeah. and uh, the and, and their understanding and everything and stuff so in hebrews yeah exactly so i you know i thought that so was a, a good very different perspective yeah yeah, yeah. I, absolutely so and well so we uh and one, one thing i'm sorry go ahead Kenny. Oh, I was going to say, just talking about bringing people together, that's, I know, what uh, what I, I really hope that we can do in the coming year, you know, definitely bring together people, and, and uh, yeah, this is a open call, I think, right now. If anybody listening right now, if you, if you want to talk to us, you know, all people of faith, all Christians, you know, just this, I feel, I'm really excited about the New Testament this year because I feel yeah. like this, this is where we can focus on the things we have in common. Absolutely. With, with the, all, all, all Christians have in common, you know, there's, right. there's so much that divides us, but you know, we're, we're in the new Testament now, and this is everything in the new Testament is what we all have in common. You know, we're Latter-day Saint, Protestant, Catholic, everybody. Yep. Absolutely. All of our Christian neighbors, bring it on. That's Let's right. Come on and join. Let's see what we got. But I, I was just going to mention when you mentioned Luke and well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know, when we talk about these guys, it's uh it's likely that they weren't uh, eyewitnesses to these accounts. This was handed down. Uh, I think most of this was written several years, even after uh, I believe even after the savior was crucified. So, mm-hmm. you know, these, the, but these were very much firsthand accounts that they got this from very much of uh, uh, what you would say is very much. Uh, um, I don't know what the word I'm trying to think is. My mind's gone blank. But anyway, these were people yeah, but- that were, Information from people that were were, that were witnesses around, even though it right, wasn't. Yeah. yeah, 
Right. It wasn't necessarily firsthand. Like this is this is what I just saw and exactly. I wrote it down. This is like something that credible about something that happened. You know, these were that, credible people. Credible. Yeah, That's definitely. That's what I was thinking of. These they got this firsthand accounts from credible firsthand witnesses and things like that. So, but yeah, this is uh you know just something to keep in mind as we go through and, and study some of this stuff. Oh, definitely. And I think it, it, that is important because a lot of a lot of people don't know that most of the books of the New Testament were written well after the fact and they're like yeah. they, they were written in different different places different times and there are people that like to point out little inconsistencies between mm -hmm. books of the bible here and there but the thing that is miraculous to me and it testifies of its truth is how similar they all are because there's all these were separate books you know we call them right. the book of matthew the book of law because these were individual books these were separate things and they were compiled together. And so this was, it's basically like if you had people all over the place, you know, writing about a certain event and then, you know, everybody came together. Oh, I wrote something about this too. Oh, you wrote something about that mm -hmm. thing. I wrote exactly. something about it. And the, so there's, it's, yeah, the consistency is amazing. I mean, I know there's, there's yeah. minor things here and there that people point out that like, well, that doesn't match up exactly. But to me, the right. fact that it's the 99%, everything matches up is like amazing. Mm -hmm. which which right. right off the bat i mean when you get into matthew the very first thing we get into matthew of course a lot of people want to skip over is the the generations you know he starts naming all the generations well but uh matthew starts out and uh his account is that of the royal lineage lineage uh establishing the order of sequence among the legal successors to the throne of david while the account given by luke is a personal pedigree demonstrating descent from david without a, adherence to the line of legal succession um or, you know, basically Luke's record is regarded by many as the pedigree of Mary and Matthew's is, is accepted as that of Joseph. Uh, so you got two different uh, viewpoints of the same thing that's happening, which is outstanding. I mean, that's great. That's wonderful stuff. You know, it's a lot of a lot of good information there. But that's the thing that we're getting into with these books is, you know, there a lot of this is secondhand account type stuff. Um, and it was done way after the fact. And and, and all these things, but these were actually really talented writers. I mean, these guys were very proficient in writing and were learned very well, very right. smart. And, uh, so these accounts are outstanding and obviously the most popular probably thing. Well, some, some of them were more, some more than others. That's interesting. Yeah. List, like, cause they weren't yeah. all very educated necessarily. Like, uh, True. Was it John? Or was, was it John that was John, uh, the most educated? That was you know, and you can kind of tell with the writing, like the writing. Right, John was very yeah, and Luke. Well, yeah. Luke was a physician, I think. Yeah, that's um, yeah. And and like I say, well, anyway, that but yeah, I mean, each one had varying de various degrees, and I mean, various degrees of of uh, knowledge and and talent and things as they wrote. But uh, I just like that each one of them is different. It would be very. Yeah. It does seem like they're very similar. Like when you read and say, well, "I already read that," and Luke. You know, I'm going to move on to the next chapter. But if you read through it, you'll see that there's just it's different perspectives. And, yeah, a lot of it is the same information because it's talking about the same thing. It makes sense. But. Yeah. And one one last little uh, fact here. So Luke, actually, he included more accounts involving women than the other yeah. three Gospels. That's which, true. Which I thought was uh, was interesting as That's well true. and stuff. So, um, well, uh I've got something to start off with, unless right. unless y'all got something to uh to, to start off start with. Off. Hit it. Fire it up. So all right, so I've got uh I've got three reasons why Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, is the man. You want to hear him? Okay, oh yeah, dude. I, yeah, because right, he's, I gotta he's hear the this. stepfather okay. now. Talking about <laughs> stepdad. Right. So so uh so the first one. We know that he and Mary were 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 espoused to to, to be married, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and that, to my understanding, is actually a, a greater, uh, more significant, a greater contract than than a than mm -hmm. a basic engagement. Engagement, yes. right? right. Uh, so um, you're, you're basically at that point. You're basically married, married, but without board. And what's the what? How they say it? Without uh, bed and board. Bed and board. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, basically, yeah, yeah. you're not That's sleeping right. with them, and you don't really live. That's with right. Them, yep. But you are betrothed to them. You know. Right. So. so whenever when he found out that she was that she was pregnant, right? She, he was going to he was going to take care of that and annul yeah. the the uh, the uh, espousal and everything privately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was a that 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 showed what kind of character of man that that he was, right? Mm 
Absolutely. Um, number two is that he he followed the direction and counsel of the angel when when he received the visitation. Mm-hmm. Right. We all and we know by scripture that just because you receive visitations from angels that you don't automatically start doing exactly what they say, right? Good I mean, point. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like layman and lemuel, right? So yeah, he, absolutely. he, he yeah. didn't have to follow the counsel. Right. Um and and it didn't it didn't necessarily uh cause him, you know, but but again, going going off the type of man that he was and he uh, knowing that, that that he wanted to to do what was right and so forth, uh, he followed the counsel in the direction of, of the angel, and then number and then number three. Um, well, also on that because he still he still was going to face kind of a public humiliation uh, mm-hmm. because you know yes his wife or uh, a spouse wife was was pregnant with a child, and there would be many people who wouldn't necessarily believe that it was from uh, being overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, right? Oh, yeah, who would? Oh, yeah, sure, whatever. You know. Yeah, right. That's, your, yeah, your, your spouse, wife, has she's already broke the contract, but you're right. not, you, you've been, you, you're being humiliated. Right. Uh, so mm-hmm. I think, I think and, that, and I'm sure you still face that. And, and, to their, and to their, you know, to their point, that's never even been heard of in the scriptures. Exactly. Like, that's exactly. not even like, you know, you've heard of miraculous births of Sarah and Abraham, and they've probably heard all these stories, but what? Like right, she exactly. just became pregnant yeah. out of nothing. Yeah. What are you That's talking right. about? That's right. That yep. don't even make sense, you know. Yeah, not uh, uh, an unbelievable thing. I mean, they they, they, yeah. they don't even have in, in vitro fertilization or anything going right. on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. So, and then, uh, and then here, uh, number three, he waited until after the birth of Jesus, of baby Jesus, to consummate the marriage. Right. Which I think is is because they 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 ended up getting married before yes. b- before jesus you know he commanded to go ahead and get married right but 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 they didn't consummate the marriage until after after right? jesus was born now and i'm speaking from as a as a guy here right okay and i'm also and i'm i, I ain't afraid to say it i uh, I'm, I'm speaking as a as a yeah. virgin before i was married right okay right. and and i, I won't ever forget my uh so i was 20 i was 26 years old when i got married mm-hmm. and uh i remember uh i was around I was about 25 years old and I ended up getting back together with some high school friends and everything. And, uh, I want to forget the, the, the comments, you know, my buddies were making like, man, you know, I, I feel sorry for your wife on, uh, on y'all's honeymoon night or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it just, but, but I mean, seriously, one of the, one of the best parts, right. Of getting married, right. Is having the opportunity to consummate the marriage. Right. That's right. Yeah. Joseph, again, being a man of character, uh, you know, held, held that off. Again, mm-hmm. three reasons why Joseph was the man. There you go. Well, yeah, I mean, you got to think. I mean, he's uh, what was I going to say? He, he, it's four dreams, right? Did he have four dreams? If you count them, the one where they had to leave Egypt, that was another one. Yeah, I think it was four dreams total where he had a, basically an angel and Joe being telling him to do something. I mean, he that just shows that he's a very visionary. He, he's extremely spiritual. Right. right. I think he is. He's just, yeah, he's yeah. really just in tune with the spirit. And I mean, you got to think about it. The heavenly father, when the plan's going down and he's putting the plan together, he's got to have two of his, uh, spirit children to be heavily involved in this, right? He's going to have a savior, his son, which is literally his son. I think it was Ezra Taft Benson said, we can't pretend that Joseph was the father or that he was begotten of the Holy spirit because he was it's literally heavenly father's begotten son. It's his son, you know, his, his son. But right. so the thing is there had to be a mother, a mortal mother, and there had to be a father or someone that would be the father role on the earth. Right. I mean, you're looking at all your spirit children. Are you not going to pick your two most, I mean, I don't, I don't even know how to say it. I mean, it sounds, you know, you don't want, obviously you top tier. You, 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 yeah, you got to get up there. That's right. You got to get up there, especially for the mother of that. Right. You know, well, I think Joseph can... doesn't get enough credit. I mean, we no, Mary, Mary rightfully so, I feel like gets. Yeah, gets Mary rightfully so. Right. But the thing is, dude, Joseph doesn't get the credit he deserves Absolutely. because Mary, Mary gave birth to him. So Mary, her, her natural instincts were going to be to protect. Right. Motherly. And care for the savior when he was born. Joseph knew from the start that was not his biological son. And that goes against. Mm-hmm. most primal male instinct at least you know mm-hmm. like he wasn't going to have the same drive to protect that child that, that mary would 
but he, from all accounts we know, was, you know, a, a, as good of a father to him as anybody could have been. You know, he, he obviously taught him well because, you know, Jesus, as he grew, he, you know, the, the Bible says he grew in stature, he grew in wisdom. And he was, uh, how, how was he 12? What, when he, uh, it, he the went away, about Jesus. Yeah, when it was in the temple, in the temple yeah, you know, like he kinda, they, yeah. they got lost along the yep. on the path there. They're traveling. Say, where where is Jesus? Oh, he's he's in here in the temple teaching all the all yeah. the priests and all the learned men. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, he had. Yeah. A, you know, Heavenly Father had to definitely choose the. It, there is a cool quote, and I can't. It's from James Martin. It's from Jesus a pilgrimage. He's not a member of our church. Um, I can't remember at this moment. You can look him up, James Martin. It's called Jesus, a pilgrimage. But he said this about, about Mary, and I love this quote. It says, first, talking about how everything, not only was, you think about the time of Mary, when it was, and how women were regarded during that time. You know, very low on the totem pole, especially during the little lull between, what I call the little lull between like, uh, you know, Malachi, and then starting in the New Testament, there's a there's a big period there of sort of an apostate type situation. The Melchizedek priesthood was no longer there. They had Aaronic priesthood, but Melchizedek priesthood sort of got taken away. Um, and so there's this little small mini apostasy thing going on in that little timeline. And so during that time, a lot of laws were put into place, man-made laws that mm-hmm. exaggerated the laws of God and really put a big just they really put women just way down with a lot of these laws i can't remember how many hundreds of laws they put down right. where women just basically had no voice they were nobody they were nothing and anyway which i think is part of satan's plan he wants to he knows what's yeah. coming he wants well, to i think fight. i think the bill of divorcement that that yeah. joseph could, very could have easily have used yeah, easily. Uh, was, was was one of those yeah I mean, easily they, the women had no no, no say in the matter that, that exactly. matter, matter of fact the women could not divorce their husband without right. the husband's permission right So the thing is, this is what he said, James Martin, Jesus, a pilgrimage. He says this, he says, first, she was a woman. This is talking about everything that was against Mary. First, she was a woman. Second, she was young. Third, she was most likely poor and living in an insignificant town. Finally, she was a Jew living in a land ultimately ruled by the Roman Empire. Taken together, Mary can be seen as a figure with little power. For a more contemporary image, think of God's appearing to a young girl in a small village in Africa. I mean, that's how we would think of it today. Like all of a sudden you hear that God has touched the earth and he's come down and talked to somebody. Who is it? Who is it? It's this small, you know, 12 year old girl in a South African village. And we're just like, what, why, why would he go there? What, what, what's special about her? What's going on? You know, why didn't he talk to, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Jeffrey R. Holland. Why why didn't he talk to him? I mean, you know, so it, it does kind of blow your mind when you think about how God works. And he takes, and it says in first Corinthians one twenty seven, God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confine the things, confound the things which are mighty. And that's what he does. He, he really wants to show, that's the best way to show his power. I mean, we see that in some of these stories, like with Zacharias, when he becomes dumb, I think that, and, and I'm, I'm jumping here. I know I'm jumping between the two things, but it just kind of goes with that. You know, how the Lord takes things like that. The angel Gabriel, he makes him dumb and, and possibly deaf because they actually had to use sign language. It sounded like, but, um, when he comes out of the temple, that was really, though, in a way, that was more miraculous and more powerful of a witness when he come out and he couldn't talk to say right. an angel has appeared to me. I think it was more believable, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in a way, instead of him just running out, the angel has spoken to me. I mean, everybody's like, OK, Zacharias, whatever, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? So there's just you look at things like this where it looks like you're getting beat down. But in reality, the Lord is using that in a way more powerful way. It's a bigger thing, you know. Right. But, anyway. but yeah, she had a lot stacked against her. Even her own, you know, and Joseph knew that Joseph's like, what am I, you know, wow. I mean, that was a big undertaking for Joseph, you know? So the angel Gabriel, which we know through modern revelation, that's Noah. And that might be something we want to discuss in a minute, but, but anyway, she, he's telling Mary, you know, um, uh, basically what her mission is to have the, the, you know, have Jesus Christ and all these things. And, and so Mary says to him after hearing all these things, the miraculous way that he's going to be born. And, you know, she's so young. They, they, they believe that she was probably anywhere from like 12 to 15 years old or something, you know, it's super young. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she says this though, right away in verse 38, Luke one thirty eight, And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Um, 
and so the word handmade is very interesting. Like I say, we don't use that word today really at all. Um, but handmade means servant or even farther slave almost. Um, because during this time, about a third of the people, especially Jewish people, even in Roman, the Romans and stuff, there was about a third of the people were slaves. I mean, everybody owned a slave. Every And what I'm saying is, is there were servants. You had them. I think the men in Jewish, uh, I can't remember which one, but anyway, it's so many years, like seven years, I think, for a man. And for a woman, it was forever. Uh, they became, you know, just servants. So anyway, the, whenever Mary says, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, he, she's saying, I want to be the servant. I, I will. Here I am as your servant, as long as you need me, whatever you need me to do. And, and it's just, it made me think, you know, do we approach God as servants or do we mostly approach God in prayer like to be served? You yeah. know what I mean? Right. And it's yeah. a very That's interesting thing because she she's approaching God at this point to say, whatever you tell me to do, I'm there. You know, it just blows my mind. It's such a simple thing, but it just makes you think, you know, when I'm on my knees praying, if I do get on my knees, um, you know, am I, am I, you know, what am I doing? Am, am I asking to be served or am I willing to serve? You know what right. I mean? It's, you know. And nobody's perfect, but I'm, but you know, it's just well, that, good that level about. of, of devotion and submission goes against Absolutely. everything culturally today. I mean, it's, as a matter of fact, you know, many people today would think you're crazy or a lunatic. If you were to say that, like I I'm surrendering yes. my life to God. When somebody says something right. makes a comment like that, they're like, Oh gosh, here you go. Some yeah. crazy religious fanatic over here. I mean, going to church is okay and all, but yeah, but come on, man. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cool stuff to do. over here is talking about <laughs> submitting their life to God, just exactly. being a slave to God. Like right. I heard Which a, gives, uh, it gives you, I was just going to say real quick, it gives you a great appreciation for those of the Catholic church, the nuns, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they really do take that to heart. They really go all out they and they stay devoted to God their whole life, you know, and it's, it's, uh, admirable, you know, I think, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just something to think of, you know, I'm not saying that's what we should do, like go out and just completely become a nun or something, but you know, it, it makes sense. You know, do we tend to want to serve God more or do we want to be served by him? More? Well, I think that reminds me to, there's something that I, that I liked the, the used to Maxwell Institute podcast used to do a lot with guests on their length. They would talk about a uh, holy envy, like, when there's, you know, people of different, different faith traditions, you know, that will be on the podcast, you know, or, or when there was people of our faith, you know, talking about other things, you know, like what, what kind of things do you admire about? And I thought it was really cool to do that, to kind of give an opportunity to point out the things that you really admire about other faiths, even if you don't believe that that's necessarily the right way to do things. Right. There's a lot of things that, that are admirable. And that's, that's one of the things that I really, I love about the Catholic church is, you know, the, the devotion, devotion. You, you have the, the priests and the nuns who like completely, I mean, they've dedicate their entire lives. And, you know, we, we do that for a period of time. You could say, you know, when if those who serve missions, you know, do essentially take those same you know, similar type of covenants, but it's only for a limited time. Right. Whereas, you know, in, in the Catholic church, you know, there's people that take these, these covenants on them for a lifetime. You, you, you can even look at it at non, you can right. even look at it in non-Christian terms with Jews, Muslims, yeah. uh, Buddhists. They, they're very, there's a lot of very devoted, you can see the levels of devotion in any, any religion. Let's just be honest. I mean, yeah. you, you really can, uh, judging by the people, you know, and how, how they live their lives. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's admirable to, to, I think there is a level of devotion that the Lord devotion that uh, the lord does expect from us or we should we should at least expect for ourselves for him um you know but uh it's just an interesting thought to have as we get on our knees and pray for things or or ask you know it's obviously we're we are to ask and to you know and things but uh well being know. being that being that you're saying that uh i heard or i saw a uh, a little pray acronym the other day mm -hmm. so so pray p-r-a-y when we pray uh, P stands for praise. You know, we're, we're going to praise God first. Mm -hmm. R, we're going to repent. We're going to repent of our of our sins. Right. A, we're going we're going to ask. You know, ask for blessings. Ask for blessings upon others and different things or whatever's going on in your life. And then Y, we end with it's it's your will. Right. Oh, whatever yeah. what, whatever hey, happens, we, we pray for your will. So I thought that's right. a pretty cool pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Praise, mm -hmm. repent, ask, and then your will. Right. Yeah. 
Good stuff. Um, yeah, the the whole one. I think what you were uh, you were referencing there, one thirty, uh, Luke one and verses thirty seven and thirty eight. There, right. uh, for for with God nothing shall be impossible. Uh, yeah, you know that's uh, you know it's what what is it in our lives that 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 truly feels impossible? You know, sometimes that's what you know, I was that, thinking about. You know, that's 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 literally Gabriel trying to tell her. You know, the reason he says that is because he says, "Hey, your cousin Elizabeth." has been barren for right. her entire her life. whole life yeah. and she's yeah. old and now she's passed so, Aaron, and yeah. now and now all of a sudden she's she's six months pregnant um you know because she's, she's six months pregnant so that's a miracle and so what gabriel's trying to do is like say i mean so it made me think that sometimes our trials may be literally for to strengthen someone else you know, that's not even maybe someone in our family, not not even in our immediate family. Maybe someone that goes to church with us can see it and it strengthens, strengthens them, which is why we should always just endure the best that we can and, and keep relying on God. And we'll come out the other side, whether we see it here in this life or in the next, because it may do something for somebody in this life. It may not be us particularly just like for Elizabeth. She had to go through that trial and be barren her whole life. And, but what, why, what was the purpose? She could have had John whenever, but right. the Lord needed Mary to see that. So she can go, okay, maybe it is possible that this can happen. Right. Yep. Not the fact that Mary, and I don't think it's for the fact that Mary n- knew she got pregnant. It's not that she knew she could get pregnant. She's a woman, I guess, you know, in that in physical sense. But I think in the, obviously we're talking about the way that she gets pregnant. And so she needed to know that it could be miraculous. It's not that someone drugged her, you know, put her to sleep and she wakes up pregnant. You know what I mean? No, this literally can happen, you know, you know, whatever. But, and and we don't know. I mean, we could speculate how it happened or whatever, but just like, uh, I think it was, uh, what was his name? Was it Ezra Taft? No, it was Harold B. Lee. He basically said, um, he said, remember that the being who brought, who was brought about by Mary's conception was a divine person. He's talking about Jesus Christ. He said, we need not question God, the father's method to accomplish this purpose. Perhaps we would do well to remember the words of Isaiah for my thoughts, are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways. Neither are your ways. My ways, saith the Lord. Um, let the Lord rest his case with his, this declaration and wait until he sees fit to tell us more. So, and, and, that it, yeah, you know. and to go right along with that, uh, conference talk, October 2020, waiting on the Lord, uh, Jeffrey R. Holland. So while we work and wait together for the answers to some of our prayers, I offer you my apostolic promise that they are heard and they are answered, mm-hmm. though perhaps not at the time or in the way we wanted, but they are always answered at the time and in the way an omniscient and eternally compassionate parent should answer them. Absolutely. Beautiful quote. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is a, two miraculous births here. So yeah, we uh, yes. don't don't I feel like we don't talk enough about the about, about John John the Baptist. You know, that the was Baptist. pretty miraculous who, too. Who Jesus Christ Himself said that was the greatest prophet that ever lived. Yeah, you have to look there that up. I mean, and there was it, all you know, like you talked about angelic visitations. <laughs> Just but he did say that it does say that yeah just, so yeah so, so zacharias yeah the uh it, it's crazy because you know an angel appeared to him and he was understandably frightened uh it always uh, I don't know, it makes me chuckle in the scriptures throughout the old and new testament every time you know somebody sees an angel and they're like ah and the yeah. angels are all like don't be scared you're not fear not and i'm like dude <laughs> I'm pretty scared scared right now. (laughs) Hey, if somebody shined a flashlight you in the middle of the forest in the dark, first thing you don't want me, if I'm your friend, I'm going to say, hey, man, chill out. It's just me. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. It makes (laughs) sense. Yeah. But the angel said unto him, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. So that's some good news right there and remind me why why he was made dumb where he couldn't speak because he didn't believe that his wife he didn't believe be, okay right yeah. could do that or he, he, it wasn't that he just said how's how can this happen you know she's too old you know how's this going to happen yep, they had no child because elizabeth was barren and they were both yeah. well stricken in years mm-hmm. yeah so, so he's kind of like question. And Sarah. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. A legitimate yeah. question. Legitimate question. I mean, seriously, it's just, you know, which it was very powerful. I will say this. It was very powerful how he got his voice back. Right, right, exactly. They, because, because they, they turned to him yeah. about, about the name. They had to. And why was yeah. that? Do you remember? Well, because normally it's named your the 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 lineage, right? You take on a name of a family member, right? right. If the father, not the father, if, if not the yeah. father, then, then yes. somebody. Because they say right. they said not anybody is in your family is named John. The thing is, Elizabeth told him it was to be John. Well, the right. the the priest at the temple said, or was it the priest at the? I guess it who they presented it to the priest at the temple. Anyway, the but they said no. Uh, we don't. They a woman's voice didn't count back then, right. so right. they wouldn't take that. Well, John, I mean, uh, uh, Zacharias, Zacharias says he starts to write it. He's like, no, isn't it? And that's when his voice came back and he said, no, yeah. his name will be John. And it makes you think, why did it have to be John? You know yeah, what I mean? No. Like, yeah. Why? Like what no. was so significant about that name? I mean, obviously the angel said his name would be John. So I guess if the Lord says it, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. I mean, obviously, but it's just interesting Yeah, that it had to be a specific. I know name. why. I know why. Why? Because Zacharias the Baptist doesn't have the ring yeah, that John the Baptist does. Way <laughs> too long. Way too long. <laughs> yep, yep. Can't, can't be named after your father. That, that's true. too long. It's true. What about Zach? Zach the Baptist. What's up with that? Come on. Zach the Baptist. Hey, that does yeah. have a ring to it. I like it. It does. It does. So uh, so speaking of names, did how did the naming of your children come about? Oh, my, mine's interesting. Is it? What you got? Well, what you not got? not super spiritual, interesting, but it's very. Uh, so one of, <laughs> I'll talk about just my son Gavin. So I had that name, I had that name picked out when I was in high school. Right. I was like if I ever have a son, I'm naming him Gavin. I was like, that is the coolest. Nobody was named Gavin. The right. only person I knew named Gavin, and it's where I got it from, was Gavin Rosdale from the band Bush. Bush, yep, exactly. Yep. And I said, that is the coolest name, Gavin. I was like, that's so cool. If I have a son, I'm calling him Gavin. That's it. That's all there is to it. You know, whatever. I don't care what my wife says. I'm calling him Gavin. That's kind of how I, um, interesting story to go with that, though. So we did. Obviously, we named him Gavin. Um, with the his middle name's the second coolest name in the world, which is Marcus. But anyway, right. um, so, so anyway, one day I was in Kroger, and this has been... I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. I don't know. It's been a while. Um, and I was in there and I was getting some balloons or something for Gavin's one of Gavin's birthdays and uh, doing something, getting that, maybe a little cake or something. And the lady says, oh, you got, you know, somebody having a birthday party. I said, yeah, my son. And she goes, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, you know, how old is he going to be? And I can't, you know, whatever it was, he was young, you know, under, under 10 or whatever, probably, or somewhere around there. <laughs> and uh, she goes, oh, that's cool. What's his name? And I said, Gavin. She goes, Really? I said, yeah. She said, my son's name is Gavin. I was like, oh, okay, cool. That's that's awesome. She said, yeah. She said, I, I named him after Gavin Rosdale from the band Bush. And I just yeah. went, I just froze. I was like, are you serious? She was like close to my age too. I was like, are you serious? I said, that's the reason I, she just busted out laughing. I was like, that was so weird. Because I thought that's such a random thing. Right. But it just happened right then. It was just, so I guess it was really meant to be that it was, should be named Gavin, I guess. But anyway, that was my little non-spiritual story. So, so Megan could tell you more about the story, like, but I, with, with Jacob, she, she had the name Jacob picked out when she was really, really young. She was like a little girl. And like, she, she's, she's even showed me where she's written in her journals. Like she wrote in her journal that she was going to have a son and she was going to name him Jacob and she knew it and she did. And so, you know, her first child and, you know, the first and only child that she bore, you know, was a son and she named mm -hmm. him Jacob. So it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. That's uh kind of similar with, uh, with Lily, uh, Amanda, she had, she had always envisioned having a daughter named Lily. And, uh, of course her being the That's firstborn awesome. daughter, she was named Lily. And then, uh, with Brody, there were only two places that I had heard that name Brody. One, uh, was he was an Alabama quarterback, Brody Croyle. Um, and, uh, the other place was uh, the movie Point Break uh, had a had a uh, <laughs> yeah, on right. uh, Brody. You're talking uh, about the old the old movie, yeah, yeah, Bring exactly. That new yeah. remake one. The, no, yeah. no, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. The, the one with pa uh, Patrick Swayze. Yeah, Patrick Swayze. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, anyways, and, and no I, one I really Brody in a corner. No way. That's the other <laughs> but that, yeah, that's that's baby, right? Nobody right, puts baby right. in a corner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> two different movies, two that's... different Patrick Swayzes. Yeah. Uh, and then Chase, interestingly enough, he we we had a hard time figuring out his name. 
um, we, we, it was, it was time to leave the hospital before, before we finally decided on his name. And we really, yeah, yeah, we, we, but we ended up landing that one pretty good because we chase him. We, that's what we said. We, we chase, chase. him all the time. I and mean, he is, he is <laughs> constantly bothered. going, going, going. <laughs> but, uh, matter of fact, if you, if, uh, I don't know if y'all, either y'all took an opportunity to watch the uh, little family podcast I put yeah, up. Yeah, I saw Chase is all over the place. I mean, he's just he's, no, he's upside down on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. But uh, and then and then Braley was just a cool sounding name. So, yep. So Gabriel uh, is Noah. It's just interesting to me to think about how Noah uh, lamented the destruction of all his people. I mean, you know, back in the day during the flood, I mean, he had to mm -hmm. see all that. But now he's given this opportunity. Um, I would say opportunity is this calling that has been given by the Lord to announce the birth of Jesus Christ. I mean, John the yeah. Baptist also and Jesus Christ. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, yeah. you know, um, I looked it up. I think Joseph Smith said that, uh, he is second. Um, how did, how did it say it? Let's see if I can find it. <clears throat> Maybe it's here. Oh yeah. Right here. It says the prophet Joseph Smith taught that the identity of the angel Gabriel uh, he said, Noah is Gabriel. He stands in authority. He stands next in authority to Adam in the priesthood. He was called of God to this office and was the father of all living in his day. And to right. him was given the dominion. So if you want Second to talk about hierarchy, he's up there. Noah's yeah. up there. So, but yeah, that's Gabriel. He, you know, it's just interesting that he saw the destruction of all these people, but yet he gets to announce the birth of the savior, which to the shepherd, I believe it was the same. He was the one that announced to the shepherds. Am I right? I believe it was Gabriel there also. I think so. Um, which, by the way, those shepherds were temple shepherds. I don't know if anybody knew that. But they, they it's more yeah. than likely they were the ones that watched the sheep that were sacrificed for temple sacrifices. Okay. So these were, these were, I would say that if you wanted to look at it, these were covenant men that's probably. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Covenant, covenant type men that they were probably because they were able to watch the sacred sheep basically for the right. temple. Um, anyway, so that's just a side note, but that's pretty cool. That's probably coming up later. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, so the angel Gabriel, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, you wonder why they, they have a, uh, why did an angel need to announce this? I mean, obviously the obvious answer is it's the savior of the world, but the other is, like I said before, when you had, who was it? Was it, uh, during, from the time of Malachi, um, let's see, let me see how many years, cause I had it wrote down 400 years. Uh, the last prophet of the Old Testament was Malachi, who lived 400 years before the birth of Christ. At that time, Israel, in large part, had turned away from covenants made with Jehovah. Consequently, they were in apostasy. Uh, all the, although the Aaronic priesthood was on the earth when Jesus was born, the Melchizedek priesthood had been taken from the earth. Therefore, there was a need for the priesthood and the gospel to be restored in their fullness. At the beginning of a new dispensation, following a period of apostasy, there is no one with priesthood authority to administer the covenants in their fullness. Consequently, the Lord sends messengers from the other side of the veil to return priesthood keys and the gospel plan to the earth. It is not su surprising that an angel visited Zacharias and instructed him with regard to the mission of his son. So that's why these angels were sent. That's why Gabriel was sent, not just because it was the savior of the world, which is good enough. But it's because it's time to start a new dispensation. Right. And it's time to get back keys and it's time to get the plan going again. Um, and it's just interesting when you think about things like that and how it works with each dispensation, you know. There's order in all things. With the right. Lord, exactly. Sure. Exactly. Well, y'all got anything else? Uh, I'll just say the last thing that I had was just in Matthew 1, 23. And this kind of culminates everything. I know I went back to the first one, but. Uh, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they call his name Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with, God us. with us. Um, and it, I like this. I got this out of the, uh, Institute manual. It says the savior's mortal ministry affirms that God is with his people. Always the first chapter in Matthew announces that Jesus Christ would be called in Hebrew Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. The last verse in Matthew contains the savior's promise to his disciples. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. By placing these parallel declarations at the beginning and the end of his gospel, Matthew may be identifying a message running throughout the gospel uh, of Matthew. 
God will not forget us. He is always with us. I thought it was pretty, pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. So well, the yeah, very good. last verse and then that verse sort of That's culminates. Cool. The Lord is always with us. Pretty cool. Well, that wraps it up nicely right there, I'd say. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Well, for our first episode of the New Testament. I'm shaking the rust off of the Old that, Testament. That, I'm trying that, to get into this new. Trying to get right. back into it. Here. That's right. Exactly. Until next time, y'all keep on striving.